I've evolved in many senses from painting super realistic wildlife images as a child and then getting to a situation now where I paint surrealism and almost expressionism in many senses. But the, but the factor of that is that if you're, if you're not painting for yourself, if you're not painting for your mind and your heart and, and your ideals, the, the message and the information that you've built up over the, the lifetime that you've spent, you're, you're kidding yourself. I mean, that's ridiculous. And, and you have to be true to yourself. My grandmother and dad were reasonably good artists and I started drawing for whatever reason. It was just something that I was really passionate about. Mum and Dad bought me a paint set when I was about nine, which is an oil set. They knew that I loved art, but just didn't know what I was doing. And I was just a kid that just, just, loved, uh, just loved to create. So I just simply started to draw. And um, it, it's just simply just getting completely absorbed in the passion of the fact that you want to create. There's simply nothing else. And I got to a stage where nothing else really mattered. And I suppose that just has happened. You know what you're going to do. There's that sense of, uh, of self when you're, when you're young that just says, well, this is, this is who I am. I mean, I've got no choice. And I got lessons when I was a kid. Mum and Dad said, look, this kid's not going to give up doing this. <laughs> he won't focus on his schoolwork. We better do something with him. Um, so they paid for, for lessons for me and then I ended up going to uh, East Sydney Tech College for a while in Sydney and just realised that my ability was actually a bit surpassed from the teachers at that stage. That was when I was in my early 20s and I thought, well they're not actually teaching me anything, they're getting more out of me. So I started exploring the world when I was in my early 20s and ended up on the doorsteps of some of the great master artists of the planet. I got my pilot's license when I was 21 and I was get an aeroplane and fly out to the desert. <laughs> I mean, land on a tropical island somewhere, it was pretty amazing. I've been around the world 16 times, I've lived in five different countries, Asia, South America, North America, Alaska, uh, India, Indonesia, Africa, all through Europe, the Baltics, you know, just literally backpack on the back. I hitchhiked across America twice when I was in my early 20s. But yeah, I mean, it was just a great adventure. I sailed, travelled across the Pacific in my own boat, jumped out of aeroplanes, dove <laughs> across deserts, and still here. A couple of near misses, which was good. Got a couple of scars. <laughs> but uh, I'm still here, and life's, life's been great. The town that I live in is a place called Moolumbar, which is on the uh, northern rivers of New South Wales. Moolumbar means the place of many possums. So it's uh, actually a town that lives in the middle of an extinct volcanic cauldron. A uh, pretty impressive place. And my mum and dad are from the area. I went to college just down the road. The people in this town are country people. Good to see you, matey. <laughs> so how's everything going tonight? Good, good. So there's no pretenses whatsoever, they just they are who they are. Lots of people that work on the farms and on the lands, you know, gather at the pub, talk, give each other a hard time. So we, we really don't take things very seriously most of the time. So. <laughs> You know, when you sit by yourself for 16 hours a day, I mean, I either listen to the radio or I read when I'm not painting or I listen to documentaries. So you tend to absorb a lot of information. But it's, it's just that factor of knowledge. I just absolutely love it. And, and I think the, the more that you use your brain, I mean, your brain is like a good athlete. It's the only great muscle that you have when you're 80 years of age if you choose to use it because nothing else works. You know, good looks fade, stupid lasts forever. <laughs> I thought that was a great saying, though. <laughs> well, 
what I do is not a job, it's, it's, it's a passion. It's the most extraordinary thing in the world. You wake up every day and you go, wow, I can do this. I can walk into my studio and go, I can sit down and I can create and nobody will bother me. Nobody can, nobody can say yes or no. I can simply do what I want to do and whatever comes from here and goes to here is my life. It's that journey and it's that continuous journey that makes it so special. Well, the importance of being close to birds and animals and reptiles in their natural setting has a lot to do with uh, the light and the way that the light responds onto the animal. Plus being able to work out the anatomy and the taxonomy of the, the individual species. Um, and it, it, you can just, the little innuendos, the, the slight little hairs or you know, where the feathers go, where they lie. So that's, that's extremely important as far as um, just getting, getting the structure of the animals concerned. And Sue's one of the curators of the wildlife and the animals in the park. You know, she allows me to have access to, to the animals and obviously because she works so closely with them, I mean, I can get quite close to them as well. It's an amazing uh, place to be when you, you're really, really up close to those guys. You can always get a model to, to stand still, but not, not kids and animals. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult, but you've just got to work very quickly. Up you go. Come on. That's a go. Roll it round. Roll it round. Crocodiles represent to me evolution. I mean, that's a dinosaur. You can see that thing was a dinosaur. Okay, come on. We'll just give him to come around. Come on. To me, it still represents part of that process of what I put into my work, that evolutionary process, and trying to portray what all of this means and how we all fit into this whole, whole process. That's the raw attitude of nature. And whether we like it or not, you can see all the disasters throughout the world, and we're still a part of it. We are not outside it. Thank you. How about that? Double take. Oh, it's incredible. You know, I, I work, I just work. And sometimes, I mean, I've, I've worked like 36, 40 hours, no sleep, just because you just wanted to do it. It's like, you know, I'm up, I'm feeling okay, I'm not tired. And you get so engrossed. I mean, if you get an idea or something that, that you're so, you know, you fall into the, the void or the abyss, I suppose, and, you, and the whirlpool of thought takes you around and you go, I can't sleep. I'm still thinking and I'm really enjoying this. It's just, it's an extraordinary place to be. So there's, there, in a sense, there's no, there's no time requirement whatsoever. It's, um, and I work extremely hard. Creativity is not work, it's, it's a drug. You know, it's, um, it just absorbs you. It's, uh, it, it revolves around you and you go, well, I, I feel great by doing this. I mean, I wake up in the middle of the night a lot of the times and I have a visual diary beside the bed. And because of all of the things that you read and that you absorb in life, your mind, and it's so bizarre, but your mind creates positions and issues and dreams just on its own without you ever having to make the effort to do it. And, and a lot of the things that we do are a conscious factor, but it's the unconscious factor of who, of who we are that a lot of people don't get a chance to tap into. They're so busy just getting on with the nine to five of life. But when you get to a stage where your unconscious factor starts to talk to you, in the back of your head. I mean, I'm not hearing voices by any means, but it's just simply there and you go, you, you fall asleep and all of a sudden the idea of a painting comes to your head. And you can see these like jigsaw puzzle parts coming into it. And another ancient history or whatever it is, and they start to come down and they slot into place. You can see this thing forming in your head and you lie there and it's, it's the most absorbing thing in the world because you go, I'm not in control. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I'm in a picture theatre and somebody else is making the moves. You know, Spielberg and Ron Howard are just pushing stuff into the middle and you're going, this is great, take it from there, pull that down, and I love this. But that's the way it works. And it's just extraordinary. I am not in control. It just happens to develop. It's, it's amazing. It 
it's just a, important to have a balance. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a job where you're completely isolated, um, and unless you've got other, say, curricular activities, it can, it can creep up on you after a while. So I try and balance that out with everything else that I do. Hey, Graham, you coming for a ride? Mate, where are we going? Talgum? Harley riding is uh, getting out into the country, just looking at the, the planet and the world the way that it really is. It's like every new adventure that I see or every new place that I go or new thing that I do. And I just love to observe, love to listen to things and see things and that sort of comes back to the work a lot. The reason I create the paintings I paint is because I want people to understand and look at it visually and ask questions. All I've done is put all the facts into place. It's like a big biological book. It's a science book, it's even a religious and a belief book. But my paintings, the large paintings are, this is who we are. Just simply look at the facts, ask as many questions as you want, but look at the facts for what they are. And what frustrates me is that as much as the study that I do, and, and you can't find the answer, it's simply like sort of stepping outside and touching the face of God. It's like, well, where is it and where do I touch and how far do I reach? You simply, you simply don't know what to do. But the fact is that it doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop thinking and trying to find that out. Because I think in the end result, if there is a God and God exists, that's exactly what he wants us to do. It would be like any father or mother. I want you to travel the journey so that you can come up and look at me and go, you did a great job. Thanks for letting me take the journey with you. When you purchase or invest in an artist, you, you buy a part of their soul. Absolutely you do. You buy their soul. And it's that, that continuum. I mean, people collect Picassos or Chagall or Cezanne, and they know when they look at that picture on the world, that they have part of the soul of that human being at that stage in their life. You're like God right then. You have captured that human being for that one instant. G'day girls, how are you? Good to see you. Hey. Come on, come on, sweetheart. Hi. Working with uh, live models is uh, important. What I'd like you to do is, some of the other ones are sort of fairly back shots with just the breast on the side, but you'll be sort of laying across this as well. You learn to see the little nuances and the sense that makes up a woman's body and just their subtle reactions. But in a sense, you're really putting the, their personality in there as well. So that's it, lean a little bit more forward, just sort of thinking, that's good. But when you've got the personal contact with somebody and you find out who they are and what makes them tick, particularly with some of my girlfriends that have modeled for me in, in the past, there's that real personal moment when I know I'm not just painting a picture. I'm recreating that moment of that human being and that really special time that I spent with them, and that's what comes across. So I want you actually physically touching Kylie. I want you over the top as though Kylie's looking at this direction, and then you're leaning on Kylie and you're looking at the other direction. But when I'm sitting there and I'm sketching the model, I remember every single thing about her body and the way that she was and her attitude to life as well. And the reason I paint women is because it's that birth process. You know, the universe was born. So we really need to, to I think, to look to the, to, the, to the feminine a lot more. Sort of, sort of gung-ho, left brain in there, you know, if it doesn't work, get a gun and we'll, we'll kill it. We really have to learn to, to balance that out and look more, in a sense, towards the feminine attitude to sort of go, well, there's a better way that we can do this and we don't have to kill each other in the process. But what I did find in the process of um, going through my life and the travels I've done uh, and the people I've met and the, and the history that I've seen, it's, it's been an extraordinary journey, ago, is that yeah, uh, 
that there is the that knowledge that all of that in, encompass of the knowledge is 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 what makes who we are, but what makes my work as well. You know, you sort of you create a piece this size, you actually sort of miss them after a while. You actually want to come up and put your hands on the child again. So. My life is. Um, it's mathematics, it's science, it's history, it's archaeology, it's paleontology, it's just, it's study, 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 it's absorbing the whole thing to get to a place where you go, now I can start to create an idea. All of the great pieces that I do um, in any sense on a daily basis are still part of that idea to build that, that, that major piece, to make that great social statement. But everything I do is based on being part of that journey and part of that place to create that enormous idea where it's a, it's a social statement where people go, my goodness, that man was actually saying something about who we are and, and, and what our destiny is, where we're going. And, and that's what art is supposed to do. Art is supposed to be the greatest social comment in the world. I mean, if you look at Picasso and Guernica, um, you look at some of the great masters or many of the great masters and they basically create these pieces and they say, this is who we are. And it's, and it's, a, it's a confrontation. It's something that most people go, well, I can't say that because I'll be upsetting people. But, but art's not designed to do that. It's about saying who we are, when we are, and why we are. And if we don't do that, we're wasting our time with it. And if people don't like it, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not asking for the whole world to like what I do. That's not an issue for me whatsoever. What I would like to find is the people that understand what I'm trying to say in my work, particularly the major pieces, when they go, ah, I get, I mean, I wish I could say that. I wish I could write it, I wish I could paint it, I wish I could communicate it. If they, if they can't do that, allow me to be part of that situation, if that's the case. I realise I'm getting to a place now where, where my body doesn't do what it used to do. But my mind and my hands, just this particular hand here, this one does work occasionally of course, but this one hand here says, you know what, if I can get up every day and move that wrist and those fingers and this elbow, and I can read and I can focus so that my mind continues to work, it's the greatest reward in the world. It's the most amazing thing that you could ever have in your life. You just get up every day and you go, I can do this, I can do this, I can, I can create.